Welcome back, everybody, for another deep dive. And, you know, today we're diving into something that's been generating a lot of buzz lately, quantum computing. Yeah, it seems like every time I turn around, there's a new headline about some major breakthrough or some company making a big move. Exactly. And and it, it could be hard to keep up with it all. Yeah. Know? So we thought we'd take a deep dive into some of the most recent developments mm. and try to make sense of what it all means. Right. It's not just about the tech specs. It's about what these advancements could actually mean for our world, you know? Totally. And, you know, I think a good place to start might be with this announcement from AWS about their new quantum computing chip. Oh, yeah. Ocelot. Ocelot. Right. What is with that name, by the way? Well, you know, it would be the quantum mechanics without a little bit of mystery, right? Right. right. But uh, what's really interesting about this chip is that it's specifically designed to tackle the problem of error correction. And, you know, I have to admit, that's not something I solely understand. Like, why is error correction such a big deal in quantum computing? Okay, so imagine you're running a complex simulation on a quantum computer. Maybe you're trying to design a new drug or develop a revolutionary new material. Okay. Even the tiniest error in your calculations could lead to a totally different molecule or material. Oh, wow. Rendering your results completely useless... So error correction is all about ensuring the accuracy and reliability of those simulations. So it's not just about getting the right answer. It's about being able to trust the answer. Precisely. It opens up so many possibilities in fields like medicine and material science, but only if we can get those errors under control. That makes a lot of sense. And, and it really puts into perspective why AWS is focusing on this. But, you know, they're not the only ones jumping into the quantum race. Oh, no, not at all. It's getting crowded out there. It's like the quantum gold rush. It is. It really does feel like the early days of personal computers with everyone scrambling to establish themselves in this new frontier. So we've got Google with their Willow chip, right? Yeah. IBM is continuing to make progress with their approach. And even Microsoft is in the game with their Majorana Quibit technology. It's a fascinating time to be watching this field unfold. There are so many different approaches vying for dominance, and it's still anyone's guess who will come out on top. It makes you wonder, will we eventually have one dominant type of quantum computer? Or will different types excel at different tasks? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? I mean, if we look back at the history of technology, we often see a period of intense competition followed by consolidation where a few major players emerge. Right. But it's also possible that the quantum computing landscape will be much more diverse with different types of quibits and architectures, each finding their niche based on the specific problems they're best suited to solve. So we could have a future where superconducting quibits are used for complex simulations. Exactly. Trapped ion quibits excel at precision measurements and photonic quibits its power our communication networks. You're getting it, and that's a future I would be incredibly excited to see. Me too. Yeah. But speaking of competition, there's a new player on the scene that we can't ignore China. Right. They've been investing heavily in quantum research, and they recently made a pretty bold claim about a new quantum chip they've developed. Yeah, that announcement definitely raised some eyebrows. They're claiming that their new chip outperforms Google's Willow chip by a factor of a million. A million. That's a it's a huge claim, and we'll need to see independent verification, of course. Of course. But it's a clear sign that China is serious about becoming a global leader in quantum computing, and they're not afraid to challenge the established players. So this development adds a whole new layer of complexity to the quantum race. Definitely. What kind of implications could this have for the future of the technology, especially given the current geopolitical landscape? Well, it's a complicated issue. On the one hand, competition can be a good thing. It drives innovation and pushes everyone to work harder and smarter to develop better technologies. Right. But we also need to be mindful of the potential for collaboration. Hmm. Sharing knowledge and resources could accelerate progress significantly and lead to breakthroughs that benefit everyone. It's a delicate balance, for sure. Yeah, the question is, can we find a way to foster both competition and collaboration in a way that leads to a positive outcome for humanity? That's the big question, isn't it? It is indeed. So we've got all these different players all vying for dominance, each with their own strengths and strategies. Mm -hmm. But let's step back for a moment and consider the bigger picture. Okay. What does all of this mean for us, for the average person? How will quantum computing actually change our lives? Now that's where things get really exciting. We're standing on the cusp of a technological revolution, one that has the potential to reshape our world in ways we can barely imagine. Can you give us some concrete examples? What are some of the areas where quantum computing could have the biggest impact? 
One of the most promising areas, I think, is drug discovery. Oh, really? Yeah. Imagine being able to design drugs that are perfectly tailored to your own individual genetic makeup. You know, targeting diseases with pinpoint accuracy and minimizing side effects. Like personalized medicine taken to a whole new level. Exactly. Quantum computers could simulate those complex interactions between molecules with a level of precision that's just impossible for classical computers to achieve. So it's unlocking a whole new level of understanding of how drugs work and how they interact with our bodies. Exactly. It could revolutionize the way we develop and test new treatments, potentially leading to cures for diseases that are currently incurable. That's amazing. I mean, that that alone would be huge. Yeah. But are there other fields where we might see such revolutionary changes? Oh, absolutely. Material science is another one. Okay. You know, with quantum computers, we could design materials with completely new properties, you know, leading to the development of lighter, stronger, more efficient materials for everything from, you know, aircraft and spacecraft to batteries and solar panels. So we're talking about like next generation materials that could revolutionize entire industries. Exactly. Think about the possibilities for renewable energy, you know, sustainable construction, or even creating materials that could withstand the harsh conditions of space exploration. It's really mind-blowing to think about the potential ripple effects of these advancements across so many different fields. It is. It really is. And it, it makes it feel like we're on the verge of something truly transformative. Mm. But with all this talk about revolutionary potential, I think it's also important to talk about the potential downsides. Right. Sure. Are there any risks or challenges we should be thinking about as this technology develops? Well, you know, it's always important to consider both the benefits and the risks of any new technology. Right. And quantum computing is no exception. And one concern that a lot of people have is the potential impact on cybersecurity. Okay. How so? Well, as quantum computers become more powerful, they could potentially crack the encryption algorithms that protect our online transactions, our financial systems, all sorts of sensitive data. So all of a sudden, our current methods of encryption could become obsolete. It's a possibility, and it's something that cybersecurity experts are already working on. So it's like a race against time. In a way, yes. But the good news is that quantum mechanics itself might offer a solution. Oh, really? Yeah. Quantum cryptography, okay. which relies on the principles of quantum mechanics to create unbreakable encryption keys could provide a new level of security in a post-quantum world. So it's like a technological arms race with quantum computers on one side right. and quantum cryptography on the other. It is, it's an interesting dynamic for sure. Apart from cybersecurity, are there other potential downsides or ethical considerations that we need to keep in mind? Well, one thing that comes to mind is equity and access. Okay. You know, we need to make sure that the benefits of quantum computing are accessible to everyone, not just a select few. That's a really important point. It, it's about ensuring that this technology is developed and deployed in a way that benefits all of humanity, not just those with the most resources. So it's not just about the technology itself. It's about how we use it and who benefits from it. Exactly. It's about responsible innovation and making sure that we're using this powerful tool for good. We've talked about the potential impact of quantum computing in fields like medicine and material science, mm. but where else might this technology lead to breakthroughs or unexpected applications? One area that I'm particularly excited about is quantum sensing. Quantum sensing? Yeah. Have you heard of that? I don't think so. So it uses quantum mechanics to make incredibly precise measurements, you know, exceeding the capabilities of our current sensors by orders of magnitude. So it's like giving us a new set of eyes to perceive the world. That's a great way to put it. Imagine being able to detect the tiniest fluctuations in magnetic fields, yeah. allowing us to create highly detailed images of the human brain or, you know, sense minute changes in gravity, potentially leading to the discovery of hidden underground resources. So it's not just about seeing things better. It's about sensing things that were previously undetectable. Exactly. The potential applications are vast, from medical diagnostics and environmental monitoring to resource exploration and even earthquake prediction. It sounds like quantum sensing has the potential to be a game changer in a lot of different areas. I think so. It's a really exciting area of research. I'm curious, are there any specific examples of how quantum sensing is being used today, or is it still mostly in the realm of theoretical possibility? Well, it's still a relatively young field, Okay. but there are already some really interesting applications. 
For example, researchers are developing quantum sensors that can detect incredibly small amounts of chemicals and pollutants. Wow. Which could revolutionize environmental monitoring. So we could have much more sensitive and accurate ways to track pollution and protect our environment. Exactly. And there's also a lot of potential in medical diagnostics you know, using quantum sensors to detect diseases at much earlier stages. It sounds like quantum sensing is already starting to make a difference in the real world. It is, and I think we're just scratching the surface of what's possible. It makes you wonder what other incredible applications we might discover in the future. It really does. You know, we've talked a lot about the potential of quantum computing and all the exciting things that it could enable. But I think it's also important to acknowledge that there are still some big challenges ahead, right? Oh, absolutely. What are some of the hurdles that researchers are still grappling with? Well, one of the biggest challenges is scalability. Right. You know, building quantum computers with a large number of qubits is incredibly difficult and expensive. Right. And we're still a long way from being able to build machines that can tackle the most complex computational problems. And it's not just about building the hardware, right? Right. There are also significant challenges in developing the software and algorithms that are needed to run on these machines. So it's a multifaceted challenge. It is. And then there's decoherence, which you mentioned yeah, earlier. Yeah, decoherence is a major obstacle. Can you remind us what that is again? Of course. So decoherence is the tendency for quantum systems to lose their quantum properties due to interactions with their environment. Oh, I see. So it's like the quantumness leaks out. Exactly. It makes it incredibly difficult to build stable and reliable quantum computers because those quantum states are so fragile. So it sounds like there's still a lot of work to be done before quantum computers become as commonplace as our laptops and smartphones. Oh, absolutely. It's important to be realistic about the timeline for widespread adoption. Right. We've made incredible progress in recent years, but it's likely to be at least another decade or even longer before we see quantum computers being used for everyday tasks. So it's a long game, but the potential payoff is huge. I think so. You know, we've talked a lot about the technical aspects of quantum computing. Yeah. But there's another dimension to this technology that I think is equally important, and that's the human element. Yeah. How do you think quantum computing is going to impact the way we work, the way we learn, the way we think about the world? Well, I think it's going to require a fundamental shift in our thinking and approach to problem solving. What way? Well, quantum computing isn't just about crunching numbers faster. It's about harnessing the strangeness and counterintuitive nature of quantum mechanics to solve problems in completely new ways. So it's not just a tool, it's a whole new way of thinking. It is. It's going to require us to think outside the box, to challenge our assumptions, and really embrace the unknown. It's like opening up a whole new way of seeing the world, a quantum perspective, if you will. Exactly. And that's what makes this field so exciting. It's not just about building new machines. It's about expanding our minds and pushing the boundaries of what we thought was possible. That's beautifully put. It really is an incredible time to be working in this field. As we move further into this quantum future, what advice would you give to our listeners, especially those who might be feeling a little overwhelmed by the complexity of this topic? I would say embrace that feeling of being overwhelmed. You know, don't be afraid to ask questions. There's so many resources available online from articles and videos to interactive simulations and online courses, you yeah. know. Start by exploring the basics of quantum mechanics. Learn about the different types of quantum computers and their potential applications. And don't be afraid to delve into the more mind-bending aspects of this field. So it's all about embracing the journey of discovery. Exactly. And understanding that we're all students in this quantum classroom. I love that analogy. And, and for anyone who's feeling intimidated, you know, you don't have to be a physicist or a computer scientist to appreciate the beauty and wonder of quantum mechanics. That's right. It's a field that's accessible to anyone with a curious mind and a desire to explore the mysteries of the universe. That's a wonderful message to leave our listeners with. And speaking of exploring the mysteries of the universe, hold on to your hats, folks, because we're not quite done yet. Oh, no. In our final segment, we're going to delve into some of the more speculative and philosophical implications of quantum computing, You know, exploring its potential impact on our understanding of consciousness, artificial intelligence, and even the very fabric of reality itself. It's going to get deep. Get ready to explore the frontiers of human knowledge and contemplate the mind-bending possibilities of the quantum realm. Okay, so we're back and ready to dive into the deep end of the quantum pool. Are you ready for this? I think so. Let's see where this rabbit hole takes us. All right, because 
You know, up until now, we've been talking about the practical applications of quantum computing, right. like drug discovery and material science. Yeah. But now we're going to explore some of the more mind-bending implications of this technology. Okay. Things that could fundamentally change our understanding of the universe and our place in it. I'm intrigued. So let's start with this idea that quantum computing could help us unlock the secrets of consciousness. Ah, yes, the big C. Right. I mean, it's one of the biggest mysteries in science. How does consciousness arise from matter? It's a question that has puzzled philosophers and scientists for centuries, and there's still no definitive answer. But some people believe that quantum mechanics might hold the key. It's possible. You know, some theories suggest that quantum processes in the brain could play a role in generating consciousness. So you're saying that our thoughts, our feelings, our very sense of self could be rooted in the quantum world. It's a mind-blowing concept, isn't it? And if it's true, then quantum computing could give us a powerful tool to explore these questions and maybe even unlock the secrets of consciousness itself. That would be incredible. But it also raises some pretty big ethical questions, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, if we can understand and manipulate consciousness, what are the implications for things like free will and personal identity? It's like we're entering uncharted territory and we need to be very careful about how we proceed. I agree. We need to approach this with a sense of humility and responsibility, recognizing that we're dealing with forces that we may not fully understand. And then there's the whole question of parallel universes. Ah, yes, the multiverse. In, uh, in part two, you mentioned the uh, many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, which suggests that every time a quantum measurement is made, the universe splits, creating a new branch of reality. It's a fascinating idea, and it has some pretty profound implications. So you're saying there could be countless other versions of ourselves out there living out different lives based on every decision we've ever made. It's a possibility, and some physicists believe that quantum computers could actually give us a way to test this theory. Really? How so? Well, by manipulating quantum states and observing their behavior, we might be able to detect signatures of those other universes. So it's like we could have a quantum telescope that allows us to peer into the multiverse. It's a wild idea, but it's not entirely outside the realm of possibility. Okay, so we've talked about consciousness and parallel universes. What about the impact of quantum computing on artificial intelligence? Ah, yes, quantum AI. That's another area where things get really interesting. So how could quantum computers change the game for AI? Well, for one thing, they could dramatically speed up the process of machine learning. You know, AI systems today are trained on massive data sets, and that training process can take a lot of time and computing power. Right. But quantum computers could potentially perform those calculations exponentially faster, leading to much more powerful and efficient AI systems. So we're talking about AI that can learn and adapt much more quickly than anything we have today. Exactly. And that could have a huge impact on a wide range of fields from medicine and finance to transportation and manufacturing. But it also raises some concerns. Yeah. Right? I mean, we've all seen those sci-fi movies where AI becomes self-aware and turns against humanity. It's a valid concern and one that we need to take seriously. Could quantum computing accelerate that kind of scenario? It's possible. You know, as we develop more powerful AI systems, it's crucial to prioritize safety and ethical considerations. So it's not just about building the technology. It's about using it responsibly. Absolutely. We need to ensure that AI development, whether it's driven by quantum computing or not, is aligned with human values and serves to benefit humanity as a whole. It's a big responsibility. It is, but I believe it's one that we can rise to think about all the advancements we've made in other fields like medicine and energy production. Right. We've learned to harness powerful forces for the benefit of humankind, and I'm confident we can do the same with quantum computing and AI. It's inspiring to think about all the possibilities if we can get it right. Quantum computing could usher in an era of unprecedented progress and prosperity. I agree. It's like we're standing at the threshold of a new renaissance, a quantum renaissance, where the boundaries of human knowledge and ingenuity are pushed further than ever before. And it's not just about the technology itself. It's about the yeah. human spirit, the drive to explore, to understand, to make a positive impact on the world. Well said. So as we wrap up this deep dive into the quantum world, What's the one key takeaway you'd like our listeners to remember? I think the most important thing to remember is that quantum computing is more than just a technological advancement. It's a paradigm shift. A paradigm shift. Yeah. It's the new way of thinking about the universe and our place within it. It's about embracing the unknown, pushing the boundaries of human knowledge, and using our understanding of the universe to create a better future for all. 
That's a powerful message. And to our listeners, thank you for joining us on this incredible journey. We hope you found it as fascinating and thought-provoking as we did keep those questions coming. Stay curious. And who knows, maybe you'll be the one making the next big breakthrough in the quantum world. Until next time, keep exploring.